Welcome back to The Lost Tactician, where we uncover the overlooked ingenuity of those who survived the harshest conditions history could offer. Today we're asking a question that has puzzled historians for decades. What if the secret to timber that outlasted empires isn't some lost medieval magic but something sitting on your kitchen shelf right now? Medieval builders faced an enemy as relentless as any human adversary, the slow, patient destruction of timber. In damp castles and salt-spray coastal shipyards, wood was under constant siege. Woodworms tunneled through beams like tiny soldiers. Fungi crept through grain and fibre, turning sturdy oak into powder. Carpenter ants, termites, and microscopic rot agents worked in darkness, invisible but catastrophic. A cathedral roof could collapse, a ship's hull could fail at sea. The consequences weren't merely financial, they were matters of survival and security. Yet medieval builders didn't surrender, they developed methods, refined through trial and error across generations that allowed their timber to outlast kingdoms. When we examine the oldest surviving wooden structures in Europe, we find a clear pattern. The wood that persisted longest was wood that had been exposed to salt, either deliberately through human intervention or naturally through its environment. This observation unraveled an entire hidden history of preservation science practiced by men who understood their materials with a clarity that modern chemistry is only now beginning to appreciate. To understand how medieval craftsmen weaponized salt against decay and infestation, we must first understand wood's fundamental vulnerability. Wood is hygroscopic. It hungers for water, absorbing moisture from the air like a sponge. In humid medieval environments, this moisture creates the perfect breeding ground for organisms that destroy timber. Fungi require dampness to flourish. Wood-boring insects need water to soften the cellulose they tunnel through. Bacteria that produce rot thrive in wet, oxygen-starved interiors. Untreated wood is essentially defenseless, but salt changes everything. When salt permeates timber's structure, it fundamentally alters the wood's relationship with moisture and microbial life. Salt is a desiccant. It actively draws moisture out of organic matter. When fungi spores attempt to germinate within salt-laden wood, they encounter a hostile saline environment that dehydrates them before establishment. Wood-boring beetles, which must maintain specific moisture levels to survive, find salted wood unbearable. The salt becomes a moat, and the wood becomes a fortress. The mechanism works through three interlocking defences. First, it dehydrates. The salt in the wood structure pulls water vapour away from fungi and insects, starving them of needed moisture. Second, the saline environment itself is toxic to decay organisms. The osmotic pressure created by concentrated salt solutions kills or inhibits the growth of rot fungi and bacteria. Third, the salt acts as a repellent. Insects actively avoid wood permeated with salt. This wasn't chemistry performed in laboratories. It was survival knowledge encoded in practice, passed from shipwright to shipwright through the simple act of doing and observing. The evidence of salt preservation in medieval practice is written across Europe's surviving timber. Coastal shipyards, where timber for Viking longships and medieval merchant vessels was prepared, were naturally rich in salt spray and brine. Shipwrights recognised that wood stored near salt water lasted longer. Rather than leaving this to chance, they deliberately maximised this effect. Timber intended for maritime use was often seasoned in salt water, submerged for extended periods, allowing sodium chloride to penetrate deep into the wood's cellular structure. This was intentional preservation engineering. The practice reached its sophistication in medieval shipbuilding, where stakes were highest. A rotted ship meant a sunk ship. Shipwrights developed a technique of packing rock salt directly between outer hull planking and inner structural timbers. When seawater seeped through gaps, as it always did, it encountered rock salt and created a brine solution. This chemical barrier prevented fungal growth and repelled shipworms and borers that could send a vessel to the bottom in months. On the HMS Victory, 
Preserved to this day, scholars have found evidence of these salt-packing methods still intact after centuries of service. Salt preservation wasn't limited to the sea. Inland fortifications and cathedrals, structures where the cost of wood failure was measured in lives or sacred heritage, also employed salt preservation where feasible. In regions near salt mines, timber was treated with brine solutions before being incorporated into structural beams. The practice was less universal inland, where salt's rarity and cost made it luxury. Here, medieval builders employed alternatives. Timber felled in winter when sap was low and wood naturally drier, charring surfaces for protective crusts and applications of tar and oils. Yet wherever salt was available, it was preferred the gold standard of preservation. Modern industrial wood preservation uses pressure impregnated copper chromium arsenic compounds, boron salts and chromated copper arsenate. They penetrate deeper, last longer and protect against broader threats than simple salt. The science is sophisticated, yet something essential has been lost. Medieval salt preservation was passive, sustainable and renewable. Timber saturated with salt would protect itself as long as salt remained in its structure. The wood itself became the treatment. Modern chemical preservatives, for all their efficacy, are foreign compounds that eventually leach away and require reapplication. They introduce substances whose environmental costs and health implications are only now being fully understood. In laboratories worldwide, scientists are rediscovering what medieval craftsmen knew intuitively. Contemporary research into bio-based wood preservation methods, treatments using natural compounds like borates, tannins and saline solutions, represents a conscious return to medieval principles. As we face challenges of sustainable building in an era of climate awareness, the medieval use of salt stands as testament to the power of simple, effective solutions. Sometimes advanced means understanding fundamental material properties and working with them, not against them. Medieval woodworkers didn't have our technology, but they had something equally valuable, direct observation trial perfected over generations, and deep understanding of how to make materials work for them. If you found this exploration of forgotten preservation techniques fascinating, we'd be honored if you'd join our community, like this video, subscribe to The Lost Tactician, and share this with anyone who appreciates how history and practical survival intersect. The greatest innovations are often hidden in plain sight, waiting for us to look deeper into the wisdom of the past. Thank you for watching.